he invades the session like let's begin can't you see the way he ate the record 50 seconds in you will never see the day that a will ever let you in i beg you then to please wake up it's me who you ain't better than look burning backwards they heard him that good serving cats cause my assertive ass could a certain fact says that you's a circus actor and the ones you call your friends are with you for the laughter i went way beyond my peers maybe cause i've been grinding daily dog for years they just think that What's good peeps, it's your boy Eduard Tota. So I may have spoken a little too soon about the sick thing. Uh, yeah, I've been, you know, off work, my stomach's been all acting up. I don't know what's going on, but I want to talk today about um, Pin and Teller Fool Us and kind of what does it actually mean for a magician to fool Pin and Teller? Does that make them like really good? Does that mean that, you know, like what does that actually mean? Because um, I've seen a lot of misconceptions, a lot, especially from people that don't do magic. They think, you know, like, you must be at the next level, which, don't get me wrong, like, a lot of these magicians are. But it's a little bit more nuanced than that. So let's kind of break it down and, uh, you know, talk about it. So, to start off, we have to really understand what constitutes fooling Penn and Teller. Now, I've done a little bit of research, and from what I can tell, um, you know, it's, it's a little bit, it's kind of vague, they don't really define it, but from what I can tell, um, if they can guess the concept, then they then you haven't fooled them. So let's take a little example, okay? Uh, let's take uh, Richard Beller's uh, uh, Fool Us performance, you know, he's a friend of the uh, channel, so we might as well. And, uh, you know, the one where he, he did the, uh, the, the shoe, the card in the shoe thing, the prediction. If you haven't seen the performance, I'll put the link in the description, go watch it, come back. Now, if, for example, what he did was really that he loaded... Now, this is not how he did it, right? They, they, that's, that, that was their guess and they got it wrong. But if the, the way he did it was he had it, you know, wrote it in his pocket and then it went through, through his, his uh, pocket, into his pants, down, all the way down into the shoe. If that was the way he loaded the card, the, the, um, the paper, he wouldn't have fooled them because they guessed that, right? See, in my mind, for me, that would have still be fooled me because I can't reproduce that. Does that make sense? So the, the way you define what fool, it, what fooling is, is kind of completely different. You know, to me, if I, like, I'm trying to figure out, like, how can I do that for myself? Okay. So if I can't figure out how I can do that, that means, that, that means you fooled me. Like, I mean, maybe I know the mechanism, but how are you doing that? Right. Uh, now, obviously, to Penn and Teller and to a non-magician, if they know that it went through the pants, well, then it's not a fooler. So that, there's a little distinction there, okay? So basically what I'm saying is that, you know, to fool Penn and Teller, you have to do something uh, that that they can't guess even the concept of. Now the question becomes, you know, what, what does it take to fool Penn and Teller, okay? A lot of people think that you have to be really, really good and then you can fool Penn and Teller, okay? And, and if you, you know, you one day you'll get to the level to the point where you can fool Penn and Teller and that's just not true, okay? Um, there are plenty and plenty and plenty of high high level magicians that just use classical classical techniques that everyone knows everyone in the magic world that is right uh, and, and they get really really good at those so what it really takes to fool Penn and Teller is something a little bit different okay it takes creativity it takes taking something that maybe you know is quite an obscure thing in magic that no one really knows and adapting it to a way that now you have this completely new thing Okay, and a new concept, a new move, a new slight, a new gimmick, whatever that may be, that's how you're gonna fool Penn and Teller. Okay, because it's not just about being really, really good. Okay, I can get really, really good at switching a card in the traditional ways that a magician would switch a card. Okay, I could become world class at doing exactly that. I'm not gonna fool Penn and Teller simply because they've seen that move, they know what's happening. But if I even for a second, come up with something that's completely new and completely original and no one's ever done that before and, you know, well then, I have a chance, even if I'm not that good at magic, I have a chance of fooling Penn and Teller. Magic is a, ver is a very interesting art in the sense that the audience doesn't really understand how good the magician is half the time. You know, you could have a guy off the street come in with a trick deck that, you know, he's practiced it two days and fool the shit out of you, and you can have a world-class magician that's practiced all his life fool the shit out of you. 
it's not like music or like, you know, movies or something where you can kind of judge how good an actor is. Or you can kind of judge. It's a little bit harder in magic because the whole point of it is to fool you. So if something fools you, then they're a magician and then they're good. Okay. And, and that's what I'm saying is that with fool us, you don't necessarily have to be the best. You don't necessarily have to be good. You don't even have to necessarily be, you know, years and years into magic. You have to be creative. Now, it just so happens that most of the time, the people that fool Penn and Teller are the really, really top of the top, right? Why is that? Well, usually to, to come up with new ideas in magic, you know, pretty much everything's been done. So to come up with new ideas, you have to know so much about the existing moves, the existing concepts, the existing things that are already, you know, pioneered by other people. And then you can kind of see, okay, that uses that concept, I can merge those two concepts together to come up with something else. Okay, it's, there's, you, it, very rarely do you see something that's completely new. It happens every now and then, but it's usually, you know, some kind of uh, advancement of previous ideas, right? So the top of the top really have a good understanding about this. They've really done the research. They're really, you know, and, and some of these guys are just really, really damn creative. You know, you just, that's it. You just, they're just like Rick Lax, man. That, you know, uh, Kalen Morali, like all these dudes that just work with, they get hired to, to come up with tricks. You know what I mean? And just really creative dudes, man. I mean, I, I, I don't know. I don't know how they really get that creativity. Uh, but I can tell you, they, they definitely know a lot about the existing moves, concepts, and, and gimmicks, and all that stuff. So in conclusion, my point is, just because someone full pin and tell doesn't make them world class, doesn't make them the best, doesn't make, doesn't make, you know what I mean? But, it definitely means they're creative, and I mean, if they full pin and tell her, you know, there's an argument to be had. If you can full Penandella, you're goddamn good. No matter how much skill, like, even if you're two days off the street, you came up with a crazy idea and you fooled them, I mean, damn, dude, you're a natural, right? It doesn't happen, but the point is, it's it's a there's a possibility, right? There's a possibility. You're not gonna get good at bottom dealing in two days, but you might come up with a stroke of luck, might come up with some crazy idea that's gonna fool some magicians. So my point is, right, to summarize, you don't have to be good to fool Penn and Teller, you have to be creative, but most people that are that creative in magic and, and understand and understand all that all that theory and all that con all those concepts and all those slights are gonna be good. They're gonna they're gonna spend a lot of time honing their skills. So hopefully that gives you more of an insight into you know what it really means to fool Penn and Teller, what it really means to fool a magician. Uh, it's less about being the best or being really really good. It's more about using techniques that they haven't seen before, which in this case means creativity. Well, that's about it for this video. If you enjoyed it, leave a like, subscribe, I do daily videos, follow me on all social media platforms, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, all the links are down below. And as always, matter of respect, much love, stay lit, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.